Alok, your philosophy, your point of view on things resonates with me so much. And one of the first things you say in the film is that the world is the way it is right now because people are living a lie. What did, what did you mean by that? Yeah. I'm really informed by a, a thinker named Richard Rohr, who says that we all have a true self and a false self. And the work of being alive is to revive the true self that we've had to submerge in order to please the people around us. And I think when people see trans people, they're threatened because we're introducing a language around authenticity that holds a mirror where they have to ask themselves, who would I be outside of what I've been told I should be? So the lie doesn't often have to be conscious. It's a sense of self-betrayal, of having to mold yourself into the image of what other people want versus yourself. And I think so much of what challenges people about transness is the clarity and precision of saying, you get to change your mind and you get to give birth to yourself. Over and over again. Uh, I mean, Alex, what was it, what moment was it when you realized that you needed to make a short film about Alok's point of view? Probably the instant I heard Alok speak. I mean, there's, there was so much that appealed to me intellectually, emotionally. I, I could feel what Alok was saying. And I think that's one of the things about being a poet is that you use words in a way that lands as an art form. And it affected me as an artist. It affected me as a person. And Alok invites me and all of us to unfold to become as much of ourselves as possible and to continue changing over time. I think it's sort of a radical inclusivity that that you that you preach in a way. It's that you know, your response to people who are hateful is to try to really understand where they're coming from. And what was your journey like of of getting to that place? A long journey <laughs> because I I had my retribution era. I had my sense of uh, being angry and wanting to clap back. But then I realized that actually when I was holding on to that bitterness and resentment, it had a corrosive quality to my own life. I was unable to show up and experience joy and delight because I was so frustrated by other people. So I freed myself from that burden. A lot of people see compassion as just benevolence to the other, but I actually think compassion also is a, an extension of self-love. It's saying my time is precious, my energy is sacred, I don't want to contaminate it with bad vibes. So I had to get to a place where I said I wasn't responsible for the trauma, but I was responsible for my own healing. And what that looked like for me was compassion was the best way to heal. And it also helped me see the world for what it is, kind of reveal the matrix to be like, <laughs> most people's prejudice has nothing to do with me. It has to do with themselves. And compassion and forgiveness is something you do for yourself, ultimately, as much as, as anything, you know, to let go of that, not carry it around. Jody, what, what was it about this point of view that resonated with you as well? that spoke to you? Well, I got very lucky to that Alex showed me the, her initial footage, which I was just blown away by. I thought it was extraordinary. It made me contemplate my own life, the, you know, the boxes of normativity that I was very busy putting myself in. Um, and it really challenged me to change too and to open to new voices and to learn, transform. I think, you know, that's the, the beauty of the piece is that it really is about all of us transforming all the time. Mm -hmm. And that willingness, there's such joy to that. And it's a joy that you cut yourself off from if you say like, no, I can only be the way I am. And, you know, I can never open to other experiences. I love what you say about not judging insecurity, you know, about that we can learn from insecurity too. I mean, how much did that resonate with, with all of you? <laughs> Well, it resonated, the, the idea of insecurity resonated with me as an artist because any time I endeavor to do something, I'm faced with my own insecurity, my own feeling of, you know, my questioning, can I do this? Am I able, do I have enough of what it takes to make this thing that I'm dreaming? And moving forward anyway, having the courage to bring all of myself into the picture to try and meet Alok and discover and learn and then create this piece as a director that spoke to me personally and I think really speaks to what's going on in the world right now. It feels like everybody's so often like divided and in their own boxes and you, you say that, you know, we is the most controversial pronoun. I really love that. Uh, what did you mean by that? And, and what did it mean to uh, you, Alex and Jody, as well? Just as a thought exercise, I, 
entertain how I have so much more in common with someone rather than focusing on what we have different. And the thing that is most in common for us as humans is that we're all going to die. That actually is the barometer of our humanity is that we're mortal. And when I remember that, I can have compassion for everyone's decisions because that's really terrifying. So people invest in fantasies like the gender binary because it allows them to feel sense of security with impending death. And so for me, and I really resonate, Jody thinks a lot about this, Alex thinks about it. Grief is one of the most important emotions that we have not actually worked through in our culture. And when we recognize that everyone is grieving something, it doesn't have to be something profound or destabilizing. It might even just be the loss of love from a parent. Then you realize actually we all have grief, even if people aren't able to surface it. So that's, I think, where my commitment to, to common shared experiences is we all know what pain feels like. Alex and Jody, I mean, that, that idea of all these things that are unsaid, grief certainly a massive one, you know, how did that resonate with you? I think one of the things that, um, you know, that you're forced to acknowledge is that we're, we have been transforming from the time that we were born. You know, the second someone said, oh my God, look at that baby. It's a boy, it's a girl. You know, from that first moment, there is a, there's a continual shifting. And we're all in grief in some ways of asking ourselves who we might have been, you know, if we had been raised with different parents, you know, if we'd been raised in a different place, if we had had a different socioeconomic background or a different time in history. And there's, you know, of course, you can't go in the past. What you do is you carry these barnacles with you of these little bits and pieces of life that have attached to you. And I don't want to get rid of them. I love them. They're me. Um, so acknowledging them and finding a place for them, these little bits and pieces of culture that you carry along with you, we're all carrying them. How did you condense the story that you tell in just, you know, 17 minutes? How did you find the focus of, of like, there's so much to dive into here. How did you find the focus of, of this film? There was so much to dive into and there's so much with Alok. There's so many different directions, but really when Alok said, my most controversial pronoun is we, it's not they, it's we. That clearly for me was not just the thesis of the film, but it was my experience as a filmmaker. It was my experience being with Alok and being with their friends. It was my experience bringing in all parts of me as an artist, as a person uh, into making this project. And it's what you talk about with inclusivity. I wanted to include all parts of myself and I'm inviting the audience to bring all of themselves into the fore and into picture. It's actually really interesting in terms of the, being an artist. I mean, Alex is a fine artist and this is your pretty much your first film. You've made a few other uh, little small films, but um, everything that she does is by herself. Um, entirely self-motivated. All of these stories are happening in her head that she doesn't necessarily share with anyone. She shares them through the camera. Um, and what a different experience to do that with a team of people who themselves are changing all the time. It, 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 it's, um, it's something that we talk about a lot, which is our how we work and um, how, how jealous we are of our time. And this is my thought, can't be your thought. And um, this, this movie, Alok, that, that Alex and Alok did, you know, have completely shattered any of those ideas that I have about the artist process. Well, I, I think it's very fitting that you're here in this snowy environment uh, as True Detective Night Country just premiered. I would never ask you for any details about the plot, but I'm just curious, what, what feeling do you expect viewers can have in, in the weeks ahead? Well, it just gets better and better. It's a really great show. And for all of the, you know, chilling, spooky reasons and for all the fans of True Detective, but I think more importantly, it's a new voice. Um, uh, there's an awful lot of the cast is indigenous. The story is the center of focus of the story is an indigenous woman. And I'm really just here to support that voice. Um, I get to use whatever experience I have, I guess, to, to watch and listen and say, you know, we haven't heard indigenous voices and we want them to be centered.